We've been blessed by the music. Thank the choir. Thank our musicians. We thank the the corner. We thank these ushers who have the underwalls and the doors to bless us as we came in. Our cherub choir. We've been blessed by the ministry of our ministerial team, our diagonate, and also our elders. Thanks to all that you have made this a blessed day. And Brother Malachi Mallon, thank you for being our worship leader. Amen. Great job. And Brother Gales, thank you, sir, for reading us the scripture. Thank our Boy Scouts. Thank our Boy Scouts. We pray the Lord to continue to bless and keep you and bless you to grow, touching other lives as well. Uh, we, we're in this 40-day study as we have started today officially, and uh, we have been looking at the pre-40 days with uh, Miles Monroe book, but we're going to start with the book itself today um, based on the movie, The, the War Room. And... Uh, during this particular period of time, I try to at least uh, share from the scriptures and the spoken word. And I'm going to use, as often as I will be preaching, uh, the Lord's Prayer. And the Lord's Prayer. And there's a difference between the one in the 11th chapter of Luke and the one that is in the 6th chapter of, of Matthew. And, and it's a matter of the time in which the uh, writers were writing and uh, when they finally looked at what would fit into the canon as we call it the scripture which is basically how the books were assembled uh, that you'll find the uh, sixth chapter of Matthew uh, has that wonderful statement of benediction uh, towards the end and says thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory uh, what you'll hear in the 11th chapter of Luke is not there. That's not there. That's a benediction. It's a benediction. And you don't always have to end something. Some things um, continue on. The prayer itself is a, it's what we call a fit prayer. It's, it's a sort of foundation. It's a model. It's an example. And from that you can grow other things. So that's the second point I want to make that you, number one, is that it fell into the canon and it was a, a old version um, that, that we have when you look at the, the Matthewian version. The second is uh, that it's a benediction. It, it does not have to be in there because it's, it's, it's a fit. It's a, it's a model, the model of how to pray. Each of these are models. And, and with the model, you don't always have to end with a benediction. And you're laying layers on what you do. So in other words, this particular prayer is one that you can use to build on your own prayers. It's a model. It's a model. But the, the, the situation, I think, is significant that it also has been drawn by those who watch somebody else pray. And I'll share that in a minute. And so we come to this 11th chapter, and the 11th chapter is one in which his disciples asked, Lord, teach us to pray. Chapter 11 of Luke, chapter 11 of Luke. Now it came to pass as the, as the Lord was praying in a certain place, when he ceased that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, 
but deliver us from the evil one. I'd like to lift as a topic to go with this text and for your thinking, a subject to go with the scripture and for the sermon. Lord, teach us to pray. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord, bless your word and hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against you. Bless your word, dear Lord, that it will be for us a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Bless your word, Lord, and send it forth. And please do not allow it to return unto your void, but do that which you have called it to do. Bless your word, dear Lord, that we will not just be hearers of it, but doers of it. Bless your word. It will come to understand it as the words of eternal life. For the grass will wither and the flower will fade. But the word of God shall stand forever. Bless your word, Lord. That your word will become our words. And our words will become your word. So let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Speak, Lord. Thy servant heareth. Speak, Lord. Thy people heareth. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. And God's people said, Amen. 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 We're living in difficult days. As comfortable as some might be, we are living in troubling times. We're living in times in which perhaps a whole generation of young people may not receive the same benefits that another older generation has received. Based on some readings that I have experienced, there's a question of those who are Generation Y, Generation X, and the Millenniums. That they're going to have as much as their previous generations have even now. The great generation and certainly those who are baby boomers, their income now may be far greater than the income of this younger generation. And to say and report that it might be even the same with education. All roads seem to lead in that direction. There's something about it, especially in the area of education, that we ought to be concerned about because there is more young people who are not finishing school, dropping out earlier. I, I don't know what it is. Some have, have come up with different things. I'm not going to use the statistics, but, but, but there are concerns that, that perhaps one of the things is the partnership. Uh, between the home and the school. It appears, it appears that, uh, that those parents don't have the same kind of concern for their children getting the best of education as perhaps those of an older generation. And you don't have to be very rich or have a lot. It's just a matter of the showing up, maybe. And every now and again, I hear teachers are concerned about the fact that there are parents who never come to PTA meetings. Never come. They never show up. They don't even seem to assemble when, when conferences take place. They're, they're not there. I, 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 I remember a man when I was uh, f father raising our sons, and, and they were in elementary school, and he lived almost on the other side of town. If you know anything about Richmond, you know that there's a West End. And we live down around Malvern Street in that area. But on the other side of town, on the west side, was, was Church Hill. And this man took a number of buses to be able to get to the school where his son was. And uh, as we were leaving, this man was standing at the bus stop, and I said, are you going a distance, sir? And he said, I've got to go to Churchill to go home. And I said, well, hop in. I'll take you home. I'll go out of my way. That's all right. But I took the man home. And in the conversation, I said, you've come a long way to the school. 
to be able to hear whatever the teachers had to say. He said, yes, I did. He said, I had to leave job early, but I'm going to go early in the morning to make up the time that I've lost. But I'm going because my son needs to know that I care. Not only do I care, I, I want him to have a better education than I have gotten. And I'm staying on his back. I said, well, that's good and admirable of you, sir. He said, I've got to do it. Because if I don't do it, he may not get some of the benefits of life. Here's another problem. Here's the problem. And there are a number of problems. Poverty is a problem. Read some statistics from uh, a most early grant here in Norfolk, and and, and a neighboring community uh, has income about fifty percent of those who are working under eight thousand dollars a year. It, it causes concern, if you ask me, that 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 some people are are suffering and dealing with the difficulties of just trying. As the folks would say, make ends, ends meet. And the children are the children who suffer. The pipeline uh, between the cradle to, the, to, to colleges are not the same, but cradle now even greater going to, to prisons. Uh, we, we're living in difficult, difficult times. And, and, and yet I, I want to say to those who are teachers, my hat's off to you. To God, please continue to bless you. Because you have a difficult job of trying to, to teach someone. And especially when they don't want to learn. Hold on. Hang in there. But there must be something that will cause a, a nation not to be concerned about persons learning. And when I stop and I think about it, it's what my parents used to say a long time ago. If you can get it in here, no one can ever take it out. Because when you have it in here, you've got, you've got the key to this society. I hope some young persons listen. And when you've got that key, you can turn it and Maybe enter some doors that normally you can't get in. And don't let everybody ever tell you that a piece of paper is not worth anything. It's worth a lot. And you're in a competitive market now. Much more than my generation has been. Because it's not just dealing with persons of another hue, Caucasians. You've got to deal with the Asians and even the Latinos. There's a whole lot of persons trying to get this little piece of pie. And you've got to deal with the fact that you have to be the best that you can be. you still got to be Jackie Robinson in the 21st century. Teachers, if anybody needs to pray for you, it's all of us. Prayer. Must be something about it because... The disciples of Jesus saw John the Baptist's disciples. And in the witnessing of what they did, they came to Jesus and said, teach us to pray. What is this thing, prayer, that seemingly John the Baptist, in the midst of being one who could stand in a wilderness and draw thousands of persons and who was feared by the very organized government of his day. What, what is it about them? That they are ones who command an ability to move on to and fro and be able to change the lives of people. This man is preaching and teaching a, a transitional kind of message that, that is altering a society. We, we see what he's doing. Tell us the same thing. Teach us to pray. After all, you are even greater than John the Baptist. He's already said, as you were baptized, you being baptized by him, by the water, that he is decreasing. He's not even worthy to unlatch your sandals. Will you teach us to pray? Teach us what it is that you have 
that makes a difference as you touch people's lives and they're healed. And those who are, are lame, they can walk. And those who are without sight, they can see. Teach, teach us how it is that you connect with heaven itself. And even when there is issues going on in the lives of people, you can transform them to be even better than they are. What is it that you have that makes this difference? We notice you pray. Teach us to pray. And then he pauses and he begins to to, to encase this whole passage of scripture about prayer. That there's some things that you've got to understand. That prayer has always been a part of our society and our culture. But you've got to watch out that prayer does not become that which is used inappropriately. That people use it by showing how great they are. How they're able to speak with words that tintillate the mind and the heart. How they're able to stand in sartorial splendor and be able to say the marvelous words that should tickle heaven itself. No, no, no. It's, it's not about how great your words are and how much you can be able to, to have people wonder how somebody can pray like that. No. It's just knowing how to be able to pray a simple prayer. That lets God know that you know that God is God all by himself and that there's no other person like him. There's a prayer that you talk to him as if you're talking to somebody that you know for years and years. And that you commune with him in a way that you're saying, I love being in your presence. That's what prayer really is. And when you go back and read it and look, you'll find that there's not a word said by the prayer about what they want, but what God is all about. It shifts from us to him. And what Jesus did was to say, this is the model. This is the tin plate. This is the paradigm. And whatever you want to build upon it and add to it, you can. But here is the prayer. I would like to really tell you that I wouldn't even call it the Lord's Prayer. And I'm not not being sacrilegious. I'm just saying this is the disciples' prayer. If you want to find out where the Lord's Prayer is, read the 17th chapter of the Gospel of John. But here, this is what I need. This is what you need. Do you think that there's something in here that might help you to be able to really pray a prayer? When the problem of America seems to be that people pray less, or if not, they've got a concern about prayer, does anyone really hear me? Am I stretching my situation when I even say that sometimes I'm operating on a wing of a prayer, as if I'm going to throw some dice in my hand? Or I'm, I'm dealing with the fact that prayer is like a Hail Mary, I know you're thinking about football right now, but just bring yourself back here to Butte Street. (laughs) Throwing it up, and perhaps somebody is going to catch Cam Newton's ball. (laughs) Did I slip that one in too? (laughs) But just, 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 as if this is some kind of magic and some kind of rabbit being pulled out of the hat. Oh, and then the sad thing, I've come across some statistics that a mainline Protestant denomination, when a survey was taken, there was only about 25% who really daily, consistently prayed. How is your prayer life? How often? How significant is it? Ken Hemphill, who used to pastor the First Baptist Church on Kempsville Road, the other First Baptist. <laughs> put out a very good book, a very wonderful piece on prayer, especially on the Lord's Prayer, called The Prayers of Jesus. And in it, he deals with the fact that, that prayer has three divisions. Most of the writers are saying it has three divisions. I, I want to take the first division as such and, and talk about the communion of prayer. 
And in it, Hemphill also says that, that, that one of the things is it stretches, it stresses the matter of community. When you read it, it's just almost the first section of it. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The first section, that, that's the first section. And, and, and yet you hear nothing about first person. Nothing about me, my. Look at the words, our Father. Look at the words, look at the words. All through it. Give us. Prove. Even sin. Our sins. The debtors. To us. Look at the words. Pick it up in, in, in the fifth verse. Fourth verse, rather. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Our, us. In other words, what God is trying to say to us that when we pray, we pray as a community. Even when we pray about one thing or another, it's still in a sense of community. We can ever learn how to pray in a community, how broad and wide and great might be what God will do in whenever we start thinking about community. Because the truth of the matter is, we're all in the same situation. I don't think if I took a poll in this congregation right now this morning, somebody is either coming out of a storm, in a storm, or getting ready to go into one. Somebody's here got some sickness in their own lives or they've got some sickness in somebody who's in their family or somebody else they know. Somebody in this particular auditorium, in this sanctuary, has really been through something that's caused their hearts to grieve. Somebody just laid to rest a loved one that they know. Somebody has been in some kind of trouble. Somebody's got somebody who's been in a jailhouse or two. Somebody's got somebody that's had some kind of financial problem. Somebody has somebody knows something about somebody that that has. Now, if we ever thought about the kind of universal prayer that we might be able to say, it doesn't include any one person different than ourselves. We would be saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're talking about our If you take Christian congregations all across this country and around this world, ever start talking in this collective way, wow, how many lives might really be touched. But if you're going into a myoptic way, that ain't nobody but me. You like that old preacher some time ago who prayed that prayer. Lord, bless me, my wife, my son, my daughter, us four, and no more. <laughs> I had to go to South Africa to kind of understand this whole idea. We were supposed to stop somewhere around Pretoria to meet some people that was going to take us to the mission site. We got there and waited, waited, not knowing that they got there and were waiting and waiting. Finally, 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 we went, went back our separate ways there to their home city and 
we back to the hotel. And we connected by phone. Only to find out that they were there at the same time. We were there at the right time. And finally we met the next day. And they looked and they said, we thought the missionaries from America looked like some other folks. <laughs> and we said, no, this is us. <laughs> but before we left, we had bonded in such a wonderful way. And they said these words, and I will never forget it. We can now pray for you now that we have seen you. It makes a difference when you can be able to see and know. And so you can begin to think to yourself and say to yourself, I don't really have to know my brother or sister in Africa, but they're praying for me over here. I don't have to know you by name, but I'm praying for you. Because we are a community. The second thing that he says is interesting. Uh, he says, this prayer stresses relationship. And the relationship is that God is the Father. It is until we get into the New Testament that we hear God being a Father. Because most of the time, they're talking about Jehovah. They're talking about Yahweh. They're talking about God being one. But Christ brings us into the ability to have a personal, intimate relationship with God that no other has ever experienced before. So much so that when he uses the word father, it is not the formal word father. It is an un informal way of saying, Daddy. I want to talk to my, my daddy. In other words, I, 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 don't, I, don't, have to, I don't have to have a, an audience and, 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 and really get to the point where I've got to make an appointment. I can talk to my father anytime about anything. The one thing that this prayer does for us is to help us to understand this is personal that we talk with God. He wants us not just to be able to say a prayer in formality and the, the mantra of prayer being that which we do just to be able to say we're faithful and religious. But at any time in our lives and in our days, we can stop we can go to and talk to God. It's like the little boy whose father was the king. And in the formality of the entrance of the king into the palace, the guards were making sure that no one came close to the king. But the little boy broke ranks and ran up there and grabbed the man. And the man who's a guard yanked him back and said, you can't grab the king like that. He said, he may be your king, but he's my daddy. That's what I'm trying to get to you to understand that, that I, I got a relationship with God, our Father, who art in heaven. I, 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 don't, I don't have to worry about when I can talk to him. I can talk to him any day, any time. I might have to deal with an appointment. You might have to have the secretaries check whether or not you can see me. But I declare as a good thing that I can go direct any time, any moment of my life and my day. And talk to God. And then on top of that, there's another thing. Because he puts it in the text in a way that it describes the kind of relationship that others have had. And he helps us to understand, I can talk to him. And when I don't get through, I can keep on asking. Because it's persistence that makes the difference. And that wonderful parable about that lady who kept on knocking at the door saying, I've got company and I need somebody to give me some food to pay, to make sure that my family is taken care of and my guests as well. And kept on knocking and kept on knocking and kept on knocking. That's the one thing about God. He doesn't mind how many times you knock. 
Some of us will get sick and tired of persons who are persistent. But God never gets sick and tired. He's always there. Isn't that some good news? To know that what the Lord was saying in this particular prayer as an example, you can call me up any day. I believe that's why the folks of yesterday used to have that old song. You said, you can call them up, call them up. I've got a telephone in my bosom and I can call them up. Call up my Savior any day of my life. Now, lastly, let me just say this to you. And, I, and I'm, 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 trying, I'm trying to keep it on, on some time concerns here and restraints because I, I want you all to get over there to the Slover Library. <laughs> I'm praying for you. <laughs> but, but, but the other thing is, is that it, this, this particular prayer and this, this section lets us know that here we have not only God who's saying to, to us that I want you to be in community, God who's saying to us, I want you to have a relationship, but God is saying, I'm an authority. And it stresses authority when it speaks about the fact that not only am I on earth, but what I do is also that which can take place in heaven. I bridge the gap of heaven and earth. I'm God. I control everything that goes on in this world. I make sure that the sun rises in this eastern horizon, arches its way over the earth, and then lands on an occidental curtain. I'm God that puts the stars in place that twinkle as if they are being programmed and trained and, and come on when I want them to. I, I'm, I'm God that makes the flowers come out at the right season and dry up even when it comes to, to, to the fall of the year. I, I'm God that caused the leaves to bust open on the trees and, and then dry up in the fall of the year. I am God. And, 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 and God is an authority. He's the one who is in charge. What prayer helps me to do is accept that, understand that, and be able to, to work with that. It helps me not to be uptight and angry when I don't particularly like something that doesn't go my way. I've come to the fact that sometimes it bothers me that parents want to be friends as opposed to being parents. And, and, and maybe I'm just old fashioned. But what I sometimes see in the mall that just absolutely plucks my everlasting nerve. Chioki, Yohansi, and Osazi will tell you today. When they used to do them little prankish things that they didn't get away with, hiding under the clothes in the, in the shop and so forth, the mama getting all worried and frightened, well, here's my boys, and I have got to go around and look, and when I find them, I'm sorry, I, 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 I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just old fashioned, I guess. That's what it is. I, I can't, can't handle this stuff. Authority is authority. And once I got, on, got that in my mind and got it straight in my head, I was able to make it in life. At least that's what my mom and dad helped me understand. And my children really after that because they had to have an understanding that authority ain't that bad. Oh, I didn't like what my, what my daddy did one time. Oh, I had some good old buddies, my friends. They were my sidekick, my ace boon coon boys, my, my posse. Oh, man, I, 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 I was somebody hanging out with these dudes. They, 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 they had me right on the corner sometime and some things we were not supposed to do. Matter of fact, I, I, I learned that that's why I don't smoke today because I didn't have enough sense to realize that the filter is the one you put in your mouth and not the one you light. <laughs> oh, if I come clean, y'all ought to come clean too. But all I had to do was to get shut up in my house. I, my dad didn't beat me that time, but he put me in the house the whole summer. 
That's why I don't smoke today. I declare. <laughs> Give me my freedom. Summer, I'm an outdoors person. Shut me up in that house. But I began to value authority. Because he saw in them what I couldn't see in them. He saw the difference. Checked out. The old folks would say, who are your, who are your friend's parents? Uh, uh, tell me where they live. and Who are they? I, I need to know them. I need to meet them. I know it sounds old, but I think some old stuff is good even for this present day. Authority. But the authority is significant from this perspective. That it ain't a matter of my being a rebel and against it. The authority is significant because I trust the one who gives the authority. If I can trust him for the sun to rise and the sun to set in this time order. If I can trust him to be able to map out my body with such intricate systems that work every day. If I can trust him to cause me to rise in the morning. If I can trust him to be at a place where even a court can't keep me. If I trust him to make a way the doors will open up. Then I trust him to be my God, my Lord, and my Savior. I don't know how you feel about it, but I was glad about this prayer because this prayer tells me I can trust God. I can trust him with my life. I can trust him with my health. I can trust him with all that I have. I can trust God. Is there anybody here can say, Pastor, I know you're right because I trust him. I've tried him and I, I've discovered that he is a God who will come through for you. I trust him with all that I am and all that I ever hope to be. I know he'll make a way out of nowhere. I trust him because he's been mighty good to me. Brought me over a mighty love. I just trust God as anybody here. They can say, Pastor, I know you're right. I've been there and done that. Had it not been for the God on my side, where would I be? I trust him. He's all right with me. Is there anybody else who can say, I know you're right. And I'm glad about it. Nobody's like my God. My Jehovah God. It ain't nothing but a little set prayer. Nothing no more than a simple prayer. But oh, I'm so glad that my mama and my daddy taught me that prayer. And I can build on it. And when I can't even pray my own prayer, I can say, our Father. Can y'all talk with me now? We're shot in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever.